Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial I'm gonna show you how we can create a great fabric material like you see in this reference right here. The tricky part about these materials is that uh, they appear to be a bit more lighter in some areas. For example the edges as you can see and um, that is not something you can do very easily inside of a reel. And I think I found quite an easy solution for you and also for me because I don't like to spend like 10 hours on one material. I want to make it look uh, very nice very quickly. I'm gonna try to explain as good as I can, but if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments and uh, I always respond to them. So let's just begin. So let's start by creating a material. I'm gonna right click in here, then uh, hit on material and then I'm gonna name it fabric. Then I'm gonna drag it onto my object. Ignore this, I think uh, the normals are messed up, but never mind. I'm gonna double click to open it. And then uh, I'm gonna hit uh, two sided so that it'll fix my problem. But you don't really need to do this. We can begin creating the material and I'm gonna press while holding three on the keyboard to create a color constant and I'll set it to a dark gray. Now I'm gonna drag the first color node and uh, I'll place it wherever and search for power. This will darken our material when we need it. I'm gonna right click on an exponent and promote it to a parameter so that we can adjust it in real time later on. And I'll change its name to power so that I will know what I'm working with. Then from the power function, I'm gonna drag it out and search for multiply. And uh, I'll hit enter. This one will be our fall off for the material, for the lightest parts. So I'm gonna name it to fall off. And I'm gonna show you later on what it does. And this needs to be multiplied again with the base color. So I'm gonna search for multiply and then uh, I'll plug the color into the A slot and uh, the multiply into the B slot. So now I'll just plug this into the base color so that you can see what we've done so far. I'm gonna hit apply and if I come here and uh, change these settings you can see that the material is indeed changing but uh, it does it into a very uniform look. So it doesn't have that fall off that we want and need. So in order to do that, we need to add a Fresnel node, which uh, you already know. It manipulates the material on how it looks uh, from the front and from the edges. So I'm gonna right click, search for Fresnel and add it to my material graph. Then I'll make the first two exponents parameters because we will use both of those in this video. And we'll combine all of these together with uh, a LERP node. So I'm gonna drag it out and search for LERP or linear interpolate. I'm gonna plug it into the alpha, the Fresnel, and then I'll plug uh, the first multiply into the A and the second one into the B. And then I'll plug the LERP into the base color. And basically that was it. This is our material. It looks worse than it actually is. Uh, just so you know, I don't have a roughness or normal map for this texture, so I'm just gonna use it plain. But if you do have, make sure to plug them in. To make it easier, you can create a material instance, but I already made one, so right click and you, here you have it. Now you can see that if I start adjusting these settings, the material changes. So first thing is I'll change the falloff to a higher value, so for example 10 to just lighten my material a bit. And I'm gonna make the power 0. You can leave the first node to 0, but if you change the second exponent, you can see that uh, the Fresnel is working and now you can also see it on the couch that uh, and even in the material preview you can see the fall off and the higher you set the value the sharper the fall off will be so for example zero it's everywhere if i set it to one you can see that uh, it's starting to show a bit more on the edges so now i'm playing with the settings to get um, the right look for my fabric material for uh, fabric i would go for of a softer look so uh, something like this so now i'm gonna jump back into the material graph uh, i put in my texture here and i'm gonna replace the color with uh, this one so i'm gonna plug it into the first slot of multiply and uh, the base node of power but in my case i also have to add a texture coordinate uh, because the uvs aren't done properly on this sofa and i need to adjust the tiling so this will come in handy for me so I set them to 10 and I'll hit apply. And I probably don't need to do this anymore, but I'm uh, back here adjusting my texture so that it looks good and it matches the reference. 
Oh, and if you have a, a normal map, roughness, specular, whatever, don't forget to add them in because uh, mine doesn't have those. So I'll just skip it. But if you do have them, make sure to use them. And that was it with the fabric material. You can use it for all sorts of uh, materials like uh, velvet or cotton or any sort. So now let's move on to leather materials, which is also very similar. I'm gonna right click, create a material, and then I'll apply it to my mesh. So now I'll double click to open the material graph. And I'll also add the fabric material besides it. And now I'll go ahead and open the fabric material and uh, I'll select all of these nodes, copy them and then I'll place them into the leather because we'll use the same ones. I'll just delete this texture and plug in the leather texture that I have, which is this one. And I'll plug it into the multiply first node and uh, again in the power base node. But for some reason when I apply this new material, it uh, messes up the UVs, so I'm just gonna use the earlier one that I made that uh, has correct UVs. But as you can see, it's made exactly the same, just uh, the values are different because uh, I used them here, so I'm just gonna set them to zero. So in this material, the nodes were named, so I named them again so that you can see what I'm uh, adjusting. In this case, I would use uh, these values, uh, one for the power so that it's not too light. And for the fall off, uh, I'm trying to adjust it to see how it looks. And you can see that if I set it to 10, it creates some sort of a plastic look, which I don't really like. So I'm going to lower the value. And I think four is the right spot. And in this case, the Fresnel nodes, I would leave them at zero. Just so you know, these settings work uh, also for path tracing, so I'm gonna close this window and turn on the path tracer so that you can see how it looks. As you can see, the material is working properly, just ignore these lines here, it's a problem with my model. But nothing to complain, I mean, everything looks pretty nice. So that was it for this tutorial. I really hope you found it useful and let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos like this one. And thank you so much for uh, your support and I will see you on the next one. Have a great day. Goodbye.